And then lastly, I want to talk about fundraising, our capital, uh, capital campaign. We launched our capital campaign back in November, I believe it was, of uh, 20, uh, 2017, great event. And it's been a terrific year as well in our Shattering Expectations campaign. In fiscal year 2018, we raised almost $20 million for the campaign. And we have raised $112 million total since the campaign started. Our goal for the campaign is $150 million, so we're 75% of the way toward that goal. Since the start of the campaign, we've had over 17,000 donors, nearly 7,000 first-time donors, and over 650 faculty and staff who have given to uh, one fund or another. We have three major support areas in our, uh, in our campaign. The first uh, over here on the left is, you can think of that as uh, in a sense, a career readiness, kind of getting students, attracting students and developing internships, research opportunities, learning abroad, and so on. Uh, those kind of extra skills that they develop uh, beyond, the, beyond the classroom. So dividing, uh, providing scholarships and fellowships in those areas. As you can see, we've reached 34 of our $50 million goal there. Uh, over on the the right-hand side, this is uh, our goal around inclusiveness, access, uh, and diversity, which we refer to in our plan as engaging every voice in the, uh, the drive to discover. We have uh, achieved 70% of our goal here, about $24 million. And uh, this would be uh, scholarship support for low-income students, for transfer students, first generation, and so on. Okay. And then lastly, in the middle group, our largest uh, goal is around research and engagement. And this is traditionally the hardest area to raise money from because people are used to being students and they like to give scholarships. That's an easy one. It's a little harder sometimes to conv convince people to support faculty research or grad student research and so on, or public engagement. But we've actually been doing exceptionally well there also, as you can see. We're actually at 74% of our goal in that area. In the roadmap report, you'll get a more detailed listing of, uh, of the various gifts that we've gotten, but let me give you a few, uh, a few examples. We have increased our internship support by 1,500% during this campaign. In other words, we had $300,000 of scholarships in July 2011 for internships, and we now have almost $5 million in scholarships in June of 2018. As I mentioned earlier, we uh, have increased our diversity among our faculty, and these, the funds that we've gotten through the campaign have helped to support some of that hiring that we did. So over the last three years, one-third of our faculty uh, have been uh, faculty of color or American Indian. We selected the third cohort of the Tali Family uh, Faculty Research Awards. This is a program for uh, new associate professors to help them launch on their next, uh, their next project. And we've had over 20 of our associate professors over the last three years receive, uh, receive these awards. This is a $1.5 million fund over a five-year period. We have been able to fund nine, uh, excuse me, nine mini and two full interdisciplinary collaborative workshops. I referenced those. Uh, before. There's another deadline for that coming up, uh, coming up soon, so I encourage you to look into that. But again, that creates these communities around a theme, a question, a topic, and brings together people from across the college and uh, even beyond the college as well. We also were able to use uh, some gift money to launch the Commons for Research in the Social Sciences. Uh, the Commons is a convening spot for conferences, competitions, discussion groups, workshops, training courses, and so on that are focused on managing, analyzing, visualizing, and interpreting and presenting uh, data. And so we see this as a, as a great resource that will grow over time. And uh, lastly, as an example, we've received transformative gifts of faculty and grad student support in a number of departments. There's three that I'll mention, uh, Asian languages and literatures, uh, German, Nordic, Slavic and Dutch and philosophy all received exceptional, award, uh, exceptional gifts that have allowed them to do things that they were never able to do before. So all of that puts us on a really strong road 
as we are heading into now our next 150 years as a college. And all of these accomplishments that I've talked about are, I mean, they can be plans on a sheet of paper, but it really takes people like you in the room, it takes the faculty and staff throughout the, the departments and the college offices to really make it a, make it a reality. And so I'm incredibly grateful for the work that everyone does on these projects day after day and, and week after week and month after month. You've made an amazing amount happen over uh, the, last, the last several years. And there are many, many great examples uh, that I could, uh, could point to. I will just give you a, a few by way of uh, example. The Riggs Initiative, which I mentioned earlier, created a critical race and ethnic studies graduate uh, student group. They hold bi-weekly meetings uh, throughout the academic year where they can support and share their writing, their research, their proposals, as well as just more generally creating a community. Gee whiz professor Chigna Desai and research associate uh, Carrie Smolkowski, with a great deal of help from Amelia White back there, uh, worked with middle, middle school students from Northeast Middle School in Minneapolis and helped them create their own digital stories on important questions uh, ranging from social justice to bullying, and introduced them to college. We brought them to campus for their graduation ceremony. And they've been working with our undergraduate students over the course of almost a year. So they're getting a sense of um, what it means to start to think about college and what it means to be a college student. And so that's a project in an eighth grade uh, set of classrooms. Uh, the economics department, the Heller Hurwich Economics Institute, has held very well attended uh, public sessions on public pensions, climate change, and trade policy, among other topics, over the past year. We've had a great deal of success um, with our faculty engaging in career readiness. And I will say this is one of the things that marks us as distinctive around the country, that our faculty have been so heavily involved in this career readiness work. The last year we had 24 faculty fellows who were learning more about how they could integrate career readiness into their, their coursework. We have 14 more this semester and there's space uh, in the spring semester for faculty who want to participate uh, as well. It's really critical that faculty be, uh, be involved in this because what we want is for students in their classes to be hearing from a professor or from an instructor, this is how what you're doing connects to one of the core competencies in CLA career readiness, whether it's digital literacy, uh, applied problem solving, or whatever it, might, whatever it might be. And we also know that there's a power of mentorship that comes with a faculty member or an instructor talking to a student about their future. There's been a lot of research on this lately, and it is one of our advantages as a residential college. It's one thing we never want to lose. Students who come here and can establish even one relationship that feels like a mentoring relationship doesn't mean that it has to be you're meeting with somebody every week, but somebody cared about them at some point and said, I care about your future. This is how what you're doing right now ties to that future. It has an amazing effect on students later on, and it is something that they, that they uh, remember forever. For those of you who saw my monthly memo a couple of weeks back, I had an amazing mentor like that as an undergrad student who recently uh, passed away, and I wrote a little bit about, about him and what he meant to me and how he had a life-changing uh, effect on me and the way that I thought about the world and I thought about being a professor and everything else. That gets replicated thousands of times every day. And through professors talking about, I care about your future enough to talk about how this class is building some skills that will tie to your life when you leave is a very powerful thing for students to hear. In that area also of, of career readiness, I want to say we've had a number of our departments that have committed to being very extensively involved in working career readiness concepts throughout their curriculum, and I'm quite pleased and uh, thankful uh, to them for doing so.